uh, let's uh, let's give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message is Moving with Signs and Wonders. You know, our service to God stands on three fundamental principles. And these principles are glorifying God, doing the will of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those are the three basic principles. And I'm going to go into more detail about them, but I want you to get those in your heart. Those are real important. Yeah, go over them again. That we have to, the motive for what we do and serving God is to glorify God. And uh, what we do when we do it is doing the will of God. And number three, how we do it. How do we do it? It's by the power of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. So I want to start uh, with Romans uh, chapter 15, verses 18 and 19. And uh, what Paul wrote was, there's only one service or form of leadership that can be mentioned, that's worth mentioning. And, and this, these two verses have come alive to me, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read them, but I, I want to just boil them down to, to begin with and saying, the only form of service to God that is worth mentioning uh, is that which is done by the Holy Spirit, that Christ does in you by the power of the Holy Spirit with signs and wonders. Uh -huh. uh, this is a, this verse is alive and said, and it says that your service to God is going to stand through time and go through the fire only if it's by the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read uh, these two verses, Romans 15, verses 18 and 19. And this is from the New uh, International Version. Verse 18. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done. Verse 19. By the power of signs and wonders, through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, so from Jerusalem all the way around to Ecrivium, I have pro fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. See, there's a lot of words there, and it's easy to get bogged down in the words. But what this is saying, Paul is saying, this is the only thing that I can mention. It's what Christ has mm -hmm. done in my life, mm -hmm. what he's accomplished in my life by the power of the Holy Spirit with signs and wonders. And, and so this is one of the three legs that we stand our service with. Uh, on and, and if we don't have this one out there by the power of the Holy Spirit, it's going to burn up, and, and it's mm -hmm. it's nothing that God wants to mention. He said, Paul said, I, I can't speak of anything else. This is the only thing worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. It's the by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, but Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, and so Christ is also saying, hey, this is all that you can mention is what you've done by the power of the Holy Spirit, and, and of course, Christ and God are are in agreement and so it's this is what god is saying this is the only thing the only sign the only service worth mentioning is what's done by the power of the holy spirit and you might say well i gave a man i uh, gave a homeless man ten dollars today uh, to help him but was it by the power of the holy spirit or was it by your own flesh and own, own ability it what we're looking at here is by the power of the holy spirit now this is that what second uh, I believe someone wants to uh, to have uh, the scripture verse again. And it's Romans uh, chapter 15, <coughs> verses 18 and 19. This is the only type of service worth mentioning what Christ accomplishes in our life by the power of the Holy Spirit and by signs and wonders. Hallelujah. And so you can do a lot of things in your abilities and in your natural abilities and intellectual abilities you can do a lot of those things but they won't stand the fire they won't stand the test of fire or the test of time and so we need to be doing by the holy spirit by the power of the holy spirit that's how we do it by the power of the holy spirit and there's a couple of other verses then that would confirm this in first corinthians 2 uh verses uh, four and five, he said, I didn't come, Paul 
said, I didn't come to you with enticing words, with persuasive words of a man's wisdom, but I came to you in the demonstration mm -hmm. of the spirit and mm -hmm. of the power. And there's a reason for it. He said in the next verse that your faith would stand in the power. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You might say, well, I, I've heard a lot. I've studied a lot. I know a lot. But it's got faith stands in the power Woo, of hallelujah. the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And another one is uh, Hebrews chapter two, uh, and, and we'll get down to verse four, but they were, they were sharing the word, they were sharing the gospel, and God was working with them, testifying with them, with signs and wonders, wonders and various miracles, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his will. And, and so there are three things that are important here, and, and I've given you three uh, verses uh, of that of, about the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, Jesus was working with his disciples, and he does that today, with signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. And those are, that's really important. We've got to realize that it's not by might, but it's mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're, is going to stand the test of time. So that's that first leg. We've got to be standing on that first uh, fundamental principle by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now it'll continue to be woven with these next two things that I'm going to be talking about. But the other one, why do we do, do anything? Why do we serve God? Why? Well, the motivation <laughs> is... This in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, to the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it to the glory, glory of God. God. Give the verse again. If that's right. Verse 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. Why do we do anything? Why do we serve God? To glorify God. Whatever you do. And so anything that's not glorifying God, you can just count it out and say, hey, this is not going to go through the fire. This is not going to stand through the test of time. It's got to be something that glorifies God. Now, how do we glorify God? Well, it, it tells us there in the 24th verse how it is that we glorify God. It says, don't seek your own good, but seek the mm -hmm. good of others. Mm -hmm. So it's about seeking the good of others. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is the principle for how to glorify God. And, and so there's a lot of verses then we need to think about what's going to glor glorify God. It, it's got to be seeking the good of others. And, and, you know, you think about prayer. Well, if you're praying for yourself, seeking your own stuff, uh, that's not going to glorify God because it's about seeking the good of others. But if we're praying, we're seeking the good of others as we're praying, then we will glorify God because in uh, John chapter 14, 13, uh, Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it, that the Father may, may be, be glorified. glorified. And John 15, 8 says uh, uh, that he wants much fruit. And he's talking about prayer. Ask, if you abide in me and my words mm -hmm. abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done for you. It's going to be done for you. All you have to do is abide in Jesus and he abides in you and then your prayers will be answered and then he says produce much fruit Amen. produce much fruit but what kind of fruit is he talking about here answered prayers and so mm, what are your prayers are aimed at they're aimed at helping the others uh impacting other people and so that's really important here uh in order for us for our service to count for it to stand the test of time, it's got to be aimed toward the goodwill of other people, and that will glorify mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's there's several scriptures about glorifying God, and I've mentioned a couple about about prayer. But we can also think about um, and there was a big offering taken up in Second Corinthians to talk about eight and nine chapters eight and nine, and and it said that they were very very poor. And they had a lot of problems, but nonetheless, they gave this great offering for the people in Jerusalem because they were facing a, a drought and famine in Jerusalem. And so that generosity, it, it talks mm -hmm. about it in 2 Corinthians 9, 13, 
that that glorified God, that God was getting glory out, out of their generosity. Um, but it wasn't just because you gave $10 to somebody, if it wasn't by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, these people were, power, were in poverty themselves and in very difficult terms. But by the, uh, I'm saying this, it didn't say it specifically in the scriptures, but we know it was by the power of the Holy Spirit. They were able to make this generous offer to the, to the uh, offering. offering to the uh, people in Jerusalem who needed. So it's about giving to other people. Uh, impacting other people's lives. Uh, and we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit and by mm. signs and wonders, by, by goodness. You know, uh, uh, goodness is going to follow you all, all the, the days, days of your life. life. Well, if you do what? Well, if you're seeking the good of other people, if, yeah. you're, if every day you get up and you say, Lord, Lord help me do these three things. Help me uh, operate you. by the power of the Holy Spirit to glorify you and, and to do your will. Okay. And so then if those are, if that's what you're doing during the day and your motivation is to do, to glorify God and you're going to do good because that's what's going to glorify him. If you do good to other people, that will glorify him. And that's when glory. The goodness follows you because you're doing good every day. Hallelujah. <laughs> then your then your goodness follows you. Yes, yes. A and then you, you look at Romans eight twenty nine, and then everything's coming together, and it it's making sense because he said, and God's going to make all things work together uh, for, for the, the good. good of those who love the Lord and called according to His purpose. Why? Because they're doing good. They're, they're <laughs> you know, the kingdom. Matthew thirteen twenty four says the kingdom is as a man sowing good seed. Good seed. Or in other words, he's doing good. And, and he's sowing his goodness here and he's doing goodness over there and his goodness over there. Mm. And that's helping other people. And, and then there's going to be all of this harvest come in and all of the things are going to work Hallelujah. together for yeah. the good. I tell you, I like this message. There, <laughs> there's a lot to it here. Uh, and that's what we need to be doing. We need to be doing good, helping other people. And then goodness is going to be following us all, uh, all the days of our life. And we'll dwell in the house of the, the Lord, Lord forever. forever. Hallelujah. Goodness. Mm -hmm. I, I'm talking about goodness. Uh, and that's going to cause you uh, to glorify God. Amen. And God's going to be glorified when you're doing good by the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. See? Jesus did good. Uh, Acts 10, 38. He went about doing good. And then look, listen to what he said in John 17, verse 4. He said, Father, I have glorified you on the earth. Have. That, that means a, that's a past tense. I have glorified you. Well, we know what he did. He he did signs and wonders. He did he, this. <laughs> He turned water <laughs> to wine. Glory to God. He uh, he gave uh, uh, words of knowledge to the woman at the well. Yeah, right. uh, and I'm just going through eight eight uh, signs and wonders they did just in the book of John. And then uh, a, on the fourth chapter of John, uh, he healed the nobleman's son who was a, di a day's distance away. Mm -hmm. uh, he healed him. And then the fifth chapter. Uh, he healed uh, the man who was lame for 38 years. Uh, and then in the sixth chapter, he uh, fed the multitude with two fish and five loaves. And, and then he walked on the water. <laughs> then, he, then he caused the um, glory to God, the lame, I mean, the blind man to see it. by spitting on the ground. Brown. That's signs and wonders I'm talking about. So there is just yeah. a few signs and wonders just through the book of John. But I could go on and go through the other gospels. But well, you all know those. You know those signs and wonders that he did. And look, he said in Acts ten thirty eight, Jesus went about doing good. Well, what was he doing? Signs and wonders. He was doing good with the power of the Holy Spirit. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. And I'm just going to stop the verse there. We know it's a lot more to that verse, but I want you to see he did good. And then in uh, John chapter 17, verse 
four, he said, Father, I have glorified you on the earth. So while he was on the earth, this is past tense. He hasn't gone to the cross yet, but still he had been glorifying the Father. And what had he been doing? He'd been doing good and uh, operating by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we all need to do. Glory to God. That's how he glorified the Father. He was operating by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he was doing good wherever he went. Glory to God. I want you to think about when you get up in the morning, mm. you think about what can I do today? That's right. What can I do good today That's right. to somebody? Well, who, who, where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to speak to that mm. I can do good and glorify you, Father? And we've got, and here's the third one. We know we've got to fulfill this, and that is uh matthew 7 verses 21 through 23 he said there's a jesus said this these are jesus's words he said there's a lot of people saying lord lord uh mm -hmm. we've done all of these things we've mm -hmm. done all these things and, and, and but he said this is the one Woo! that will enter the kingdom this is the one I, i'm not talking about these are the two i'm talking about this is the one that's right uh, that's the reason i'm saying this is the third a fundamental principle for your services to be based on, and that's to be based on the will of the Father. Mm, mm, so you've got three things. We've got to make sure that we're hitting all three of these bases in order for our service to the Lord, for our works to be, to go through the fire, mm -hmm. to stand the test of time, to be acceptable in his sight. Mm -hmm. It has to be, how is it done? It's by the power of the Holy Spirit with signs and wonders. And, and and what is the motive? Why, why, why? It's to glorify the Father. And what are we doing? What, what, what? It's to do God's will. Those are the three things. Now, I'm going to talk about God's will here. And I want you to know that God is seeking true worshipers. Mm -hmm. Those, that's who he's seeking. He's seeking true worshipers. But, but Isaiah 58 is where we get to to find out who the true worshipers are. Mm -hmm. And there's really two groups uh, in Isaiah 58. In the first five verses, it talks about people who are doing ceremonies and rituals, and, and they love the Lord. They love the presence of the Lord. But this this was just called uh, false false worship. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not the real thing. Uh, and then down to verse 6 on, we'll talk about the true worship. But here he's saying, hey, what you're doing out there, you're, you're doing with sit with uh, ceremonies and you're doing with rituals and you love to be in my presence and you love uh, to study about me and you love to hear about me. But this is not what I have chosen. Woo, woo, glory, listen to me. Verse mm -hmm, six, mm -hmm. he, he said, this is what I have chosen. And we're going to talk about eight different things that he's chosen because we're talking about the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. How do we do it? So he tells us very much what his will is to help these eight categories of people. Let's just go through these, Sherry. Okay. And I'd like to, to preface this by saying that this is the chapter, Isaiah 58, that this ministry is, is founded upon. This is the, the chapter uh, that the Lord had us read over and over and over again out loud. And he said, this is, I am establishing uh, this ministry on Isaiah 58. And, and so I just uh, preface that to let you know uh, where we're coming from tonight. Isaiah 58, verses six and seven. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Verse seven, is it not to deal your bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out into your house? When thou see the naked, you cover him, and thou hide not your own self from your own flesh. Okay. So there are eight different groups of people here, we could say. And, and so what I want you to, to see from these scriptures is that this is what God put on our heart. He told us to study it for a year. So mm -hmm. every day for a year, Sherry and I study uh, this passage. And, and these uh, are the things that God chooses to do. And he chooses really for us to do them. And, and I'm going to talk about that. And, and of course, how do we do it? Well, we do it 
through the signs and wonders of the power of the Holy Spirit, we do it to glorify uh, the Father. And, and so these are the things that we do. This is the will of God. He said, this is what I choose for you to do. Mm -hmm. And it turns out <clears throat> that what's been interesting to us, uh, the Lord spoke to us, uh, Sherry, to several decades ago about us studying here, and this is the foundation of everything we do, is Isaiah 58. Uh, uh, but what, what's interesting is that as people are around us for a while, eventually these verses will speak to them too. Yes. They'll rise up and speak to them. They'll see the importance, the relevance of these verses for today. Mm -hmm. And a verse, we're going to just focus on these uh, verses for a moment. But we're really where we're headed is down to verse 12. But we're going to stop, just take some time out here at verses 6 and 7. And, and he said, these are eight different groups of people that, that I want you to minister to. I want you to loose the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, mm -hmm. to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke. That's four. Uh, and then five, it's to deal your bread to the hungry, uh, uh, bring the poor into your house. Uh, number seven is to clothe the naked. And number eight is to show yourself to your flesh. And now I'll just start here with verse uh, eight. And uh, who you are really is your spirit man. And so your spirit man needs to rise up and just kill that old flesh. The old man was <laughs> crucified on the cross. But there's also yeah. the flesh. Uh, not only your flesh, but it's also your flesh and bones. So also uh, show yourself to your family, uh, to your uh, spouse, your siblings, your children, mm -hmm. your uh, uh, different family members of, of who you are, that, that you have a purpose, you have a calling on your life. And, and we need to be doing these things. But how do we do these eight things? Well, we do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. How are you going to break every yoke? It's going to be by the power, power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. You know, uh, the anointing, Isaiah said, the anointing destroys the yoke. So the anointing is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So this is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to start that and say that Sherry and I very much started uh, working with children and low-income areas, um, and th then we moved into jails and prisons and drug rehab mm -hmm. uh, facilities. We've done all of these things. We've had a mission for a number of years. So uh, in the beginning, we were very much in the natural level uh, with these uh, verses uh, and, and ministering to them, and we've done that years for years and years in a lot of different ways. Uh, but then uh, in more recent years, we've been uh, doing the same thing more on a spiritual uh, basis. So, for example, it, it says bring the poor into your into your house. Well, uh, we bring a lot of poor people into our house through the meetings that we have, the Zoom meetings that we have. Uh, they get very intimate with them, uh, and it because there are a lot of them are hungry. See, they're hungry for the Word of God. They're hungry for the power of God. They're hungry for spiritual things. So we bring them in. A lot of times they come in with just the helmet of salvation. That's right. And they're naked. The they're naked. The, the rest of them is just, they don't have the clothing on. And so we put on the spiritual clothing. We give them spiritual food. And, and, and we're reaching out to people all over the U.S. Uh, we also are reaching out to, throughout the Latin America uh, and different, and different uh, groups. Uh, so we're reaching out in a lot of different ways. So, yes, we started in the natural and just working with people on the street uh, that were that had the, these conditions and they had uh, uh, yokes and we broke mm -hmm. those yokes and we cast out demons and, and we did all of those things. And we fed the people uh, natural mm -hmm. food, but we're we're still doing a, a lot of that in the spiritual realm. We're feeding spiritual food and what, what I'm getting at here is this is God's will. This is God's will for all of us to be doing good to other people. And we do it to glorify the Father. That's the why, to glorify the Father. And, and then the how is by the power of the Holy Spirit. So doing it in our own flesh, our own abilities, it, it's not going to stand the test of time. It's mm -hmm. not going to stand the test of fire. But I said it, it doesn't 
in there, uh, it goes all the way down to verse 12. And, and in verse 12 of Isaiah 58, it really tells what it's about. It's about restoring communities and, and repairing mm -hmm. cities, cities. And, and building foundations. Uh, and, and I just want to say that uh, yesterday in the news here in Athens, Georgia, and we're not a real big city, but they uh, arrested uh, uh, 13 members of a gang, 13 members of a gang, and uh, they confiscated 60 guns and all kinds of drugs and a million dollars in cash among these 13 people. And they said there's 60 more people in that gang in this city. And this is the reason there have been so many shootings in this city. And so what Isaiah 58 is talking about here is restoring the communities Amen. So, and Amen. restoring the streets so we can walk in the streets. And so how are we going to do that? Because each and every one of you have a city uh, that you have a responsibility in. You have something that you can do in your city and, and maybe you have responsibility or maybe God's giving you a calling to other cities as well. You know, God has uh, called us to the cities. Mm -hmm. uh, we go and pray over the cities. We've done this for years and years. We've prayed over throughout cities, the world. Uh, yeah, capital cities through of, of nations throughout the world. We prayed for them. We prayed right there in front of their Congress and uh, right there in the city, uh, in the very center of cities, because it's restoring cities. See, if you do these three things that I'm talking about tonight, you will be a part of those that are going to be restoring communities and restoring mm -hmm, cities. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a little city like this uh, having one gang that has 13 people in it and they're carrying a million dollars in cash, all kinds of drugs and 60 guns. That's just 13 people. Uh, and yet there's 60 more people in that gang and there are other gangs in this city we've got to re restore our cities and we've got to uh, yeah. we've got to raise up our communities and we've got to bring righteousness to them and how are you going to do it it's with these three things how do you do it by the power of the holy spirit why do you do it to glorify the father and what are you doing the will of the father so it's just these three basic principles and you can do it and you can do it in your city and you can do it in your family and there are family members uh, in your family that need salvation they need healing they need deliverance they need things because we're talking about meeting the needs of the people and that's doing good it's not about praying oh uh, meet my needs uh, come down and fix my situation this is about mm -hmm. meeting the needs of other that's what's going to glorify god and you do it by the power of the holy spirit with signs and wonders and then you're going to be raising up people to do god's will and you're yeah. going to see communities turned around and you're going to see Hallelujah. neighborhoods yeah. uh, turned around and and righteousness brought into your neighborhood and righteousness into your city let me tell you the government cannot do it it does not have the power to do it you have it only the remnant has the power and the directive and the incentive and the instructions on how to do it how to change your city and and to bring it back to righteousness amen glory amen. to god hallelujah thank you for being here hallelujah hallelujah you're finished I'm, I'm oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm Hallelujah. Well, that's that's what I want to do. I want to do those three things. Uh, I want to do Isaiah 58. And and I want to uh, you know just uh, spend my time the rest of the time I have here on, on this earth uh to glorify the Lord and to walk in his will, to do his will, and to move in signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want, you know, more power. He, he has more power for each one of us. If you think you have it all, uh, then the enemy has deceived you uh, because there is always more. There's always more of the Lord. There's always more of his goodness. There's always more of his spirit. 
There's always more of his incredible love. Hallelujah. Uh, unfailing love. And so this is uh, this is something that I believe that I don't know about you, but my my heart is leaping right now um, because I'm I've I've been stirred up tonight, stirred uh, inside of me that I want uh, my spirit man to rise up uh, to be so great and so powerful uh, that my flesh doesn't have a chance uh, that uh, that you know I'm going to show myself to myself. You know, and myself is the, the spirit of the Lord uh, that's within me, the power that's within me. And I want it to overcome uh, every obstacle, every uh, pain, every discomfort, uh, every uh, evil thought. Uh, and, and I believe that that is what this, this message is all about uh, with doing signs and wonders uh, is that uh, they, they follow you uh, wherever you go. They will follow you. Uh, if you believe the believers, uh, they will follow those believers. And, uh, and King David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.